Hey everyone, Swiffer here. Uh, I'm here today to show you guys my new Weekora suite. Uh, it's built specifically for Miss Weaver, um, so that you know you can do your best healing uh, in Mythic Plus uh, on this healing intensive Mythic Plus week. Uh, we've got Bursting, Quaking, and Fortified, which means the trash is going to hit hard, and there's going to be a couple of bosses where you're going to have a killer overlap going to come very close to one-shotting people or it's going to be dealing so much damage but you can't cast because of uh, of quaking so you, sh you need to know what your options are um, in light of that and in light of wanting to push my lunk further I've built this and hopefully you guys will enjoy it too um, the only part of this suite that is not built uh, into it is this one right here. This is called Effective Health, and I'll link that down below. Uh, basically what it is is it shows you your max health after absorption effects and after your versatility, after anything that's going to reduce the incoming damage. Uh, so the P is for physical damage and the M is for magic damage, uh, and it will also show another number down below uh, on many abilities uh, that are recurring abilities uh, to show you how much health you'd have after another one hits. Uh, so on Lady Hate Coil, you've got your Focused Lightning. Uh, on the uh, Demon right before Advisor, uh, Melandris and Cortis Stars, it'll show you for the Shadow Bolt Volley. Uh, and I believe the last boss in Black or Cold, it'll do that as well. It'll do that for a good number of enemies, uh, which is really nice. It's nice to know if you're going to get one shot or not. If you're going to get one shot, well, you need to hit a cooldown. Uh, and, you know, you can gauge based on how much missing health you'll have and it'll tell you how much missing health you'll have whether you need something heavier like diffuse magic or dampen harm or if you can use something a little bit less like fortifying brew uh, now for my actual week or a suite uh, the only one that is not for mythic plus specifically uh, down below we have ENR's verdant embrace and that is actually a pantheon proc uh, so that is for your ANR's compassion uh, in Antorus when uh, four separate Pantheon trinkets have their effect happen. Uh, everybody that currently has that effect uh, gets a special buff. Uh, for healers, we get ENR's Verdant Embrace, causing our Vivify to give a shield. Um, doesn't do anything in Mythic Plus because it can't occur in Mythic Plus. Uh, but this is just my simple week or a suite, and so I figured I'd just bundle that in anyway. Uh, aside from that, we've got uh, a nice little mana bar, which will actually change color as we go farther and farther down it. Uh, so, wither that down as fast as we can. So as you get closer and closer to zero, You'll go from blue to gray to greenish uh, into the yellow and into the red finally. Uh, so obviously, you know, if you're if you're devouring your mana, if you happen to be low on mana between pulls, you want to know that and you want to be able to say, "Hey, uh, please don't pull. I can't heal you if you pull." Uh, so it, it's very nice to have that right up front. Uh, I know personally, I sometimes don't quite look at it and. I'll go into a pull with maybe 35, 40, 45% mana, and sometimes that's not enough. So, yeah. always good to have it front and center. You've got your percentage on the right there and everything. Uh, next, we've got Teaching of the Monastery, which is our DPS passive. Tiger Palm causes Blackout Kick to strike an additional time, stacking up to three times. So, at zero stacks, we've just got a desaturated icon here. Uh, I find just the desaturated icons just make it look more full. Uh, I could have just left it empty, but it doesn't look very nice with the empty spaces. Uh, so all of these just desaturate when they're on cooldown. Uh, so at zero, it's just desaturated. At one, at two, you've just got the number there, uh, and you've got the actual rotation uh, behind it, just like any of your other cooldowns you'll see. Uh, so that you know, hey, it's going to wear off in a sec. I should either press Tiger Palm again, or I should let this out so that it doesn't wear out uh, if I'm able to, and if not, well, not the end of the world, but it's good to know. Uh, and then when you hit three, which is your maximum stacks, it does glow so that you know, hey, don't hit Tiger's Palm again, it's a waste, you should hit Blackout Strike next. Um, 
So next we've got Tiger's Lust, uh, which is the tier 30 talent. Uh, now this one won't show if you're in G Torpedo or in Celerity, um, which is worth noting. Um, personally, my favorite is Cheap Torpedo, but uh, it, it definitely is worth noting that Tiger's Lust is the most useful of the abilities, uh, and that while there are some runbacks if you wipe, um, where you're going to be a bit slower with that between a speed set and your existing rolls and the Tiger's Lust, you shouldn't be losing out on too much. Uh, the utility of Tiger's Lust is that it can actually dispel roots and snares. Uh, as well as speeding up somebody else who might not have a uh, movement ability available to them at that particular time. Uh, so you've got fights uh, like Grimhorn the Enslaver in Vault of the Wardens. His Torment, you can actually dispel that Torment off of somebody with Tiger's Lust, and as long as they move out of that cage, they're taking zero damage. Uh, so in High Fortified Keys, um, like we'll be seeing this week, he's going to really hurt you can completely remove at least one of those from the equation uh, every 30 seconds, which is really nice. Uh, other times where that's useful, uh, the third binder in Eye of Ajar, right before the last boss, Magic Binding. If you've got two really squishy players, well, you can hit one cooldown yourself, and then you can dispel one squishy player and use Tiger's Lust on another. Um, on higher keys, you might need to dispel multiple times, so maybe you'll be revivaling the first, Tiger Celeste with a Dispel on the second. Ideally, it's dead after that, but, you know, you've got options. Um, if your DPS is low, well, maybe you want a Tiger Celeste de and Detox the first, Revival the second, and you hopefully have Tiger Celeste back for the third. Uh, so, you know, play what you want, but it's a good idea to get used to playing Tiger Celeste and have the option to... Uh, to use that on other players. Personally, I'm actually using the add-on clique now um, to allow me to bind it to a shift click on a unit frame. That, uh, and I'm doing that with my uh, life cocoon as well. Uh, it just makes it a lot faster uh, to be able to access it. Personally, I don't use Voodoo. I use the default unit frames and Voodoo didn't do exactly what I wanted it to. So I'm using clique you use whatever you want. Uh, um, next, we've got the Revival. Uh, it's always nice to know when Revival's off cooldown. Uh, if you happen to be playing with the wrists, obviously they're not great for Mythic Plus. Uh, but if you happen to be playing with that because that's all you've got, or you don't have anything better, well, you're going to have a different cooldown on Revival. You've got Relics. Uh, it doesn't really line up with anything. It doesn't have much synergy with anything. So However, it is a solid instant heal. It's going to heal your entire party. Uh, and especially this week where we've got Bursting and we've got Quaking. Sometimes you're really, really going to be needing that Revival this week. And it's really nice to know when it's up. Um, next, we've got Thunder Focus T. This is, I think, the most important one that I've got in this entire set. This here will show when it's off cooldown with the regular icon. When you activate it, it'll glow and show you how many stacks you have. So you use your stacks, and then it desaturates and shows you the cooldown. Um, having it front and center like this, it's really nice to know, hey, I'm able to use this. Hey, I'm not able to use this. I need to be planning ahead, right? Um, it's great to be able to use it. It's great to know when to use it. But sometimes you just really need it, and sometimes you really want it, and you don't have it. It's nice to know. Hey, in three seconds, I'm going to have this. Maybe I'll pre-hop one person and I'll be able to use this in a sec. Um, and sometimes you won't have that and you need to life cocoon to save somebody, uh, which is why both of them are side by side. You, you've got your options uh, and you can see them front and center, uh, which is really important in weeks like this week where somebody's going to be taking heavy damage and maybe somebody's going to be taking a lot more than they should be. Uh, on the right, I've actually put my uh, Renewing Mist that I've always had at the bottom in the center here. Uh, I removed the glow effect, and there's no sonar ping anymore, but it uh, it still serves its purpose. It flies in a little bit. Uh, this is actually modified from the How to Priest Prayer of Mending Week Aura, because uh, why make something yourself when there's an easy option to rebuild it? Uh, 
So that's really nice. You really do want to have your renewing mist out if mana permits. Um, those vivify procs, 40% increased healing is really, really strong. Uh, especially if you've got the boots on, which give you uh, an extra person getting hit and some extra healing. Uh, next, we've got our Pride as Weak Aura, which I'll uh, I'll try and pop that in. Disc or actually, that's in the Weak Aura suite, so uh, we won't need to put that in, but you can import it. Even if you just want the Pride as, you can import the whole thing, delete everything else. Here's a Pride as. Uh, and it just it simply shows you the cooldown. It shows you the current value. So if I take damage, that 1.8 million is going to go down. Uh, the only thing that it's missing is when that shield runs out, you don't have a cooldown showing uh, for when it's going to come back. Uh, uh, next, we've got our leg sweep. Most of the time, it seems we're playing leg sweep. Uh, there's a few options where you know you can play the other two talents in the row, uh, but for the most part it is leg sweep that I play and that most monks play uh, so that's going to be something that you very much want to know that it's off cooldown and of course it's there to proc Sefus as well so if you're running Sefus at the standard Sefus weak aura where you've got a glowing effect once you've used your leg sweep it's going to light up and it's going to show you how long you have left of the Sefus secret buff uh, which is giving you the extra 25 or the extra 23 rather percent haste pushing you basically almost in a bloodlust uh, Which I really enjoy using for damage uh, You know if you can spin uh, if you can do your spinning crane kick with that It's it's pretty decent for throwing in a bit of extra damage when the group isn't taking uh, anything at that time uh, and then once it comes off, give it just one sec, uh, for that to come back off for us. So once we proc it again, uh, so you've got that time, you spin around, you spin around, uh, once that wears off, zip out of there, you've got your cooldown remaining on the actual effect of Sefus, uh, which is really nice, you don't have to guess on it. And then it'll glow again once it comes back. Personally, I do like to zip in there with set food, spin around a bit, zip back out. That way I'm not getting cleaved or anything. And then I'll just try and get some procs with my decimator. But, uh, yeah, do whatever works best for your group. If your group is very good about where the cleaves are going to be hitting, well, maybe you can spend a bit more time in melee. If your tank isn't exactly the best, well, maybe you need to be sitting out more. Uh, except for when you're going to be hitting your leg sweep. So... You've got the options there. Uh, you can, of course, proc Sefus with your Paralyze as well. Um, but the only thing to note with that is that Paralyze will take any dots off of the target. So if you've got a Warlock, if you've got a Fire Mage, if you've got a Boomkin, uh, and especially if you've got an Assassination Room, they're not going to love you as much anymore after you start pressing that. Um, so try and use it either right when combat starts or on something perhaps that's not even in combat. Paralyzed doesn't put you in combat unless you go inside aggro range. So uh, aggro range is just a little bit under 20 yards. You gotta be very careful with it, but it is possible to use it on something that you're not in combat with without getting in combat and get to your set foods. Uh, aside from that, you know, play around with it. Use it if you want. If you don't want it, you know, I made it for myself, if that, if these particular things don't work for you. Uh, most of these are actually built just right out of weak ores. You can build from a template. Uh, I like to use icons for most of my stuff, but under Monk, uh, you've got all sorts of stuff. So your buffs, your debuffs, cooldowns, legendaries, you've got everything, right? So if this doesn't work for you, you have options. Uh, if you're looking for something in particular, drop it down below in the comments. I'll do my best to uh, try and come up with something for you, find something for you, and we'll, uh, we'll get everybody with something nice. Where are we Good luck with your keys this week. Uh, hopefully we all have some fun with the bursting and quaking, and uh, hopefully Revival does its job. Have a great week.